There's an upcoming player in the online video market that could actually kill YouTube. And I'm not talking about TikTok. I've been documenting this platform for about nine months, but no matter how many times I wrote this video, I would always find something wrong with the final draft. Something was missing. But then I looked at all my drafts together from the entire time I'd been investigating this site, and suddenly, everything made sense. I uncovered what's essentially a platform engaged in a civil war against its own users without their knowledge, and found the one reason that this site might actually be a threat to YouTube. If you haven't guessed it already, I'm talking about Rumble. Also, while this investigation is meaningful to me, I'd like to preface this by saying, we're not going after Kaiser Soze here, you know, we're not going after Moriarty from Sherlock. Like, just to give you a perspective of who we're talking about here, let's head to Cura? Cura. Cura? One sec. Cora. What does she have to do with this? Why is Rumble, a YouTube rival, growing so popular? I'm gonna try and read you two lines from this answer from someone who uses the site um, without laughing. And I already know what they are, and they're not, they're not funny, they should be scary, but you'll see. For starters, Rumble doesn't hit you with a test to see if you are gay every time you watch a new video. Rumble is not in a war against white people, including Hispanics, who are also white. <laughs> you want you can pause and read the rest of that post i'm not going to read it i've seen enough but it does kind of make you wonder what kind of person would spend months of their life documenting what that kind of person does with their time online this is just pearly things in case you haven't heard of her before she is one of many people making bad content for cringe incels but in her case think about she's basically if like Andrew Tate was allowed to trade in all of his charisma for hair. And I'm not sure if she, I should even say that because she might take that as a compliment. A lot of people think I'm insane because I don't think women should vote. Oh yeah! Well, we know what I think! Who cares what you think? You're a girl! <laughs> the main reason I know about Pearl is because I watched this Chad Chad video. If you haven't seen this video, you have to watch it. I mean, the last time somebody released a diss track that went this hard, Drake became a father. You are hiding a child, let that boy come home. And instead of taking the L gracefully, like Drake, uh, Pearl decided to make a response video. And I really watched it for like 10 seconds. I'm, I'm sorry, I just don't want to hear her speak. But I still wanted to get an idea of what she said without watching the video. So I just read the comments. The thing about getting ratioed on Twitter is that the people who are liking the reply to your tweet probably don't care that much about you. I mean, you know, like mentally, it doesn't involve that much space. They're probably not fans of you. They probably really do not, you know, think about you that much. You just happen across your feed. At least that's what Elon tells himself at night. But, but look at this shit. Like, like. This isn't some sunny V2 cherry picking. This is a wall of hatred. I mean, you know you've been ethered when you get toasted in your own goddamn comment section. But it got me thinking, who is this woman? So I looked up her channel. She's got 1.5 million subscribers. I mean, can't relate. And I know I just called Pearl's fans cringe incels, but after looking through her page, I realized I have something in common with them. I also don't want to watch her content. And then I went to her about tab and I saw all the standard plugs and what is that? And that is how I found Rumble in November of 2022. And I don't think I could effectively tell you how insane the first click onto that site was. And why would I tell you when I could show you? At first glance, it looks like Rumble could be summed up simply with this meme, but it can't. Uh, unfortunately for me, I was on my main Google account, like, you know, the one I use uh, when I did that first click. Wait, we saw this, right? Ah! You know, I didn't realize that I was clicking directly into hell. And because Google knows my demographics data of, you know, straight white male, uh, let's just say that people at Rumble knew exactly what kind of losers their site should be marketed towards because I got pelted with ads for Rumble nonstop on every platform, like Google searches. They found me on Reddit. They found me like 
Instagram, they found my Facebook. Like I've been getting these ads everywhere, including back here on YouTube. You know, this, this ad that I'm about to show you was on every video that I watched for like three months because I clicked on Rumble accidentally one time. And I really feel like the only fair way to show you and kind of introduce you to how Rumble sees themselves might be showing you their own advertising. Hi, welcome to YouTube. Thanks, it's great to be here. I'm just gonna upload my video right now. Uh, let me see it first. Oh, wow, no, you can't post that. First of all, it is adorable that you think that YouTube would let you know there's something wrong with your video before you post it. But I mean, why would you let reality get in the way of a good narrative? That's the Trump 2024 campaign slogan, by the way. I'll spare you from the rest of the cringe that I had to endure from this ad, but here's the heart of their pitch. All right, I'm gonna be leaving now. Where are you going? To a place where I can't get canceled and they celebrate free speech. <laughs> uh, but in fantasy land. It's not fantasy land, it's called Rumble. Later, pal. Okay. okay. So YouTube with free speech. Let's see what gets posted there as if we don't already know. Uh, also, remember this dude. He will be very important later. Politics pull the big boy views on this platform. They are the first shelf when you log into the Rumble homepage and they absolutely deserve to be there. The audience for Rumble are basically YouTube expats whose favorite content creator got banned for hate speech, or as they would call it, hate speech. And I could watch some of these videos and talk through them, kind of rebut the arguments, but I'm not gonna do that. These people have like three talking points and one joke. And if this content was the only thing on their site, I would say the story is not very interesting. I mean, it's just what your MAGA uncle sees when he opens up YouTube, but that that's not the case. Rumble doesn't wanna be right-wing YouTube. Rumble wants to be YouTube. And this is an old quote from an old Jarvis Johnson video when he was still kind of in the, the tech, you know, programming space before he left to be a YouTuber full time. And I can't find exactly which video I, I did try, um, but it really stuck with me when I watched the video. He said that a common phrase in website design is don't design for the user you have design for the user you want. Now, that's exactly what Rumble is doing. Rumble is trying to expand into the gaming market. I mean, because obviously. Every time I've refreshed the incognito window that I use to browse Rumble, gaming has always been the first shelf down, and I've never seen a video on there with more than 10,000 views, which is like a tenth of the views that videos that are actually on the first page due to merit are getting. Dude, every, ch every gaming channel is pulling in just pearly things numbers. In fact, I've regularly seen people on this shelf with only one follower, which is probably themselves. Not that I would know anything about only having one follower that's themselves. Um, oh my God, that has been, please clap. <laughs> oh, Jeb, where did it all go wrong? Please ring that bell. <laughs> Unfortunately for Jeb, he didn't know that in order to dodge all accountability for anything you say, all you have to do is say you were taken out of context. A clip was taking, taken of me. It was a bit out of context. Anyway, these gaming videos are basically in the second best spot on the entire site and no one is choosing to watch them. However, not respecting other people's choices is kind of on brand. Let's take a minute to talk about this dude. He is talking to Bitcoin like it's his ex. Bitcoin, I showed you my wallet. Please respond. <laughs> the entire finance tab is about crypto. I mean, I have my problems with the YouTube finance space, but at least they talk about real money. Sometimes. Do you remember that funny prank that we all pulled when we gaslit girl boss and gate kept Miriam Webster into putting the correct definition of literally right next to the incorrect definition of literally? I feel like that's what Rumble is trying to do with the word viral. I mean, how do you call something viral with less than 10,000 views? And it's odd that the views on this tab are so low because normally when conservatives hear something is going viral, they try to spread it. Another thing you can find on Rumble is like ripped YouTube videos. I mean, if you look up Rumble on YouTube, the main results are how to turn copying and pasting into a side hustle. Homie literally says copy and paste in the thumbnail. I mean, I know we're kind of numb to copyright infringement on the internet, but like you're literally telling on yourself, like 
The, what's that one line? It was the like, old MF Doom line. Snitches telling all their business, sitting in court and being their own star witness. <laughs> yes, yes, that one. <laughs> Normally, if you want to make money by stealing other people's work on YouTube, you at least need to put Hassan's face in the bottom left corner. Like, hey, Hassan. What do you think of my video? It's such a stupid video, dude. Thanks, big guy. To be fair to this dude, he actually tried it and it didn't work. So, I don't know, man. Do it. Do what you want with your time, but geez louise. You remember that stupid WWE spinoff that people were mad at, at Charlie for like two weeks because like he, he started it somehow? Like they have taken out some kind of long-term advertising contract on Rumble where they just like appear on the first page for like like it since it started it's it's been like bolted right there i mean no one's really watching it the only power slap that these people really want to watch is ben shapiro powerfully slapping liberals with facts and logic at this point into my investigation in rumble i'd started to kind of detect the internal conflict that was going on behind the scenes but i wasn't quite able to discern why it was happening i hadn't put all the pieces together yet why is their homepage filled with videos that nobody wants to watch? What is pulling numbers on this platform? I mean, everyone that's actually pulling views on this platform is also getting views on YouTube. And they're bigger on YouTube. And white. And I didn't realize this was a big problem for Rumble until I watched a clip that somebody posted of Pokemon stream. Now she was talking about streaming platforms here, but I think it holds true for all kinds of content. But for me, the real indicator that a streaming platform is viable is if I see a smaller creator pop off on that platform. To me, it's not at all impressive for someone who's huge to go somewhere and have viewers because it's like you're already very popular, right? I mean, to my knowledge, Rumble hasn't generated a single new person in any industry. Like, have you heard of anyone being called a Rumble? <laughs> Fucking <laughs> rumbler. <laughs> but this is honestly where you start losing me. I'm look look at these images, right? Why are these people uploading the same videos to both platforms simultaneously? I mean, same thumbnail, same title, same length. Are these the same video? I I'm asking you that because I'm not watching anything posted to this platform. I mean, doing the research into this platform has done enough damage to my brain. Actually watching this, these videos might make me even stupider. Huh? Of all the channels we looked at just now, one of them in particular caught my eye because I looked at their leaderboard on Rumble and this dude was on it twice. This dude is an absolute who mega lol on the rest of the internet, but on Rumble, he's one of the site's biggest stars, which is a title I imagine is a lot like owning the most valuable piece of land in the metaverse. I think this qualifies him as a perfect case study on what the people on this platform actually care about that makes it different from YouTube. He calls himself the Salty Cracker, possibly because he is also white and fragile. If you want to get an idea of who this dude is, let's just take a zoom in on one of his thumbnails. I mean, I, I don't know, he, he might be a good person. Everyone makes mistakes. Maybe, maybe it's just one miss. It could be just one miss. You never know, could be one miss. Into what? <laughs> I just read that again for the second time. That's not good. It's so funny to me seeing Biden with this particular stash style. I mean, you know what side of the political spectrum that that particular German megalomaniac represented, right? You know who's probably on this site, right? You know who they support right now right but why would you let reality get in the way of a good narrative oh yeah right sorry the salty crackers content really offends my sensibilities i mean not just because of the hate speech and you know the obvious reasons it should um but because the videos are terrible like terrible and i don't even need to watch them to tell you they're terrible like let's just watch this together on high speed these videos are all like this. Maybe one video at the beginning, but then it's just this dude blabbing for eight minutes. And like, if he stumbles or he like uses filler words, he doesn't cut that. He just, he just tries to one take it despite 
objectively not having that talent despite ostensibly this being his full-time job. Your full-time job is to talk and you can't do it. He just never cuts. He never cuts. He never does anything interesting with the video except it's just him in a little square doing this. I mean, he labels himself as comedy politics, but the only joke that's funny from this dude is his production value. Normally, if you want to spew hate speech and have no production value, you need to do two things. First, put up some CSGO surf, and second, hide your chin. But remember, this this would be fine for like a, a third channel or a second channel or like a vlog channel or like a channel where only people who are directly fans of you are going to watch that, like, like on YouTube. But remember, this dude is one of the biggest creators on Rumble doing this. The oddest part about the Salty Cracker is that Homie is posting the same videos to YouTube with the same offensive titles and thumbnails. His ass is not being censored. I mean, actually, that ad from the beginning was right. These people should not be posting to YouTube. This stuff is disgusting. I don't understand how these people can dedicate so much of their time to hating such a small percentage of the population. You know, for people who are supposedly so pro-life, how about any of you fucking get one? And that incredibly based line is where I was comfortable ending this video when I wrote it the first time in February 2023. But something was missing. Something was happening, but I just couldn't see it yet. Rumble has developed into a full-on civil war where somehow both sides are losing. Funnily enough, the, the guy I showed you from the ad is probably the reason the whole mess started. Before we get to the civil war, one general update. YouTube removed every video the Salty Cracker posted to the platform before mid-February, and he hasn't posted anything transphobic since. Now, they might have been privated, but according to some YouTube comments, they were all removed. And if you can't trust user crazy funny cats for the truth, I just don't know what this world has come to. And listen, that isn't to say you aren't allowed to talk about some of these issues. YouTube allows you to say a shocking amount on this platform, but this? There are tactful ways to approach this topic, and he chose the one that's straight up bullying. I get into this a lot more in the companion video to this one, but this reminds me a lot of the paradox of tolerance, which states that if a society is tolerant without limit, its ability to be tolerant is eventually seized and destroyed by the intolerant. While I appreciate that everyone should be able to voice their point of view, some people express ideas that are so dangerous that they should not have a platform. I have no official say on what YouTube does, but just from what I've seen, I really do think that the Salty Cracker should probably get banned. <laughs> now it's time for what I've been teasing since the start of this video, what nobody else is talking about about this platform, the Rumble Civil War. Rumble is a public company, which means that their stock is publicly traded, but also they have to publicly report their finances. So I can pull up exactly what their finances say on, on Yahoo, but I don't know what any of this nerd shit means. Luckily, I know somebody who does. Hello? Hello? I look at this, and my eyes just glaze over. What, is, what does it mean? I'm not a pro, but just looking at it, operating expenses greater than their revenue, and they have a negative operating income. A massive negative like, operating income. Okay, so that's minus $21 million. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been told that essentially what this sheet means is that the company is burning money like it's going out of style. And even if they were to start cutting costs right now, they still wouldn't be profitable. Advertisers don't want to appear next to alt-right content. Therefore, a platform filled with alt-right people is going to struggle to make money. Thanks, Captain Obvious. Can you keep a secret? What I'm about to tell you is decidedly not public. And the people involved in it will likely deny it if they hear it. But their actions speak louder than words. If you look at Rumble today, it's very different than it was just three months ago. Do you remember that thumbnail montage I showed you at the beginning of this video? Do you remember when I told you that politics pulls the big boy views on this platform? Do you remember the shelves that no one cares enough to watch about? Do you remember when I said, design for the user you want and not the user you have? When I wrote the first draft of this script, I put this paragraph at the center of it. I don't think we have to seriously worry about a site like Rumble killing YouTube anytime soon. Despite what the people who put up the shelves want, the people on Rumble are like that one SpongeBob scene with the curtain.
And I was right. That's who their users are. But that doesn't mean the site is okay with that. They unironically seem to be trying to moderate their platform and their user base by changing what the algorithm will show you, at least on the front page. You know, the people are still making and watching the hateful content, but it doesn't appear as publicly. I mean, the users would call this a shadow ban if YouTube did this. Actually, that's not entirely true. There's still two places that you can find hateful content on the Rumble front page. The first is a section called editor picks. This is clearly what the people at Rumble, who work at Rumble, what they like to watch. We've got the same section on YouTube. It's just called trending. The other place you can find the hateful alt-right content is on the leaderboard of the site, which they have conveniently buried at the bottom of the web page. It is quite common that the fourth or fifth highest viewed video on the leaderboard will have more views than the entire rest of the front page combined. What this tells us is that both the people who work for this site and the people who watch this site still just like alt-right content just as much, but the people who want to get their money out of this site do not like this content being on the front page because it has some serious scaring the maidens energy. I just don't know how I would pitch to Coca-Cola that you're going to appear right before Tate's speech with Andrew Tate. So the users already on Rumble are clearly never going to pay off for the investors because they want to watch content that advertisers don't want to advertise on. But the investors really want their money. So what they're trying to do is make the site worse for the existing user base in order to bring in a new user base that's going to watch videos that they can actually slap ads on top of. <laughs> there, there's some joke about how, yeah, the great replacement is happening. It's just happening on fucking rumble. <laughs> this is where this guy from the beginning comes back. I, I told you he was important. He's from the rumble ads. Uh, this is Steve will do it. He was part of a group called the Nelk boys that I hadn't heard of before because I'm not 14 and he was banned from YouTube for a reason that is pretty bullshit. I mean, I looked into it and you know, he's done a lot of bannable things, but the stated thing that got him banned is kind of BS. And so he did the only logical thing that someone could do in his position. He switched to the only other video streaming service available, which is Rumble. And Steve brought with him his audience, young kids who liked his prank videos. And while Steve has done his best to extend an olive branch to the existing bonkers people who are on this platform with, you know, more right wing content. And he's also used his increased freedom on Rumble to make this wild thumbnail and presumably wild video. Uh, the main thing that Steve has done is he has shown Rubble executives the exact way to fix the monetization of their platform. Sign mainstream content creators. Just off the top of my head, they've signed Kai, Speed, Destiny, Jadeon, and Mizkif. Basically, the calculation they're running, and, and stick with me here, is basically the metaphor that this could be compared to is that Rumble is basically a pool that is 100% full at this moment of pee. Ew. And no advertiser wants to get in because that's disgusting. And so their whole goal with signing influencers is they just sign enough influencers and add enough water, like normal people, that eventually the concentration of pee in this pool is low enough that advertisers want to, you know, go for a swim. And I know that metaphor is disgusting, but it's not as disgusting as the people who currently use this platform. The site will never be good. The toxic users are already there. Like Reddit tried to ban a lot of toxic communities in 2015, and it's taken so long for the psyche of the website to like recover. I mean, it still isn't fully there. I mean, you know what I mean if you've been on Reddit. Without the help of any mainstream content creators, the natural path for this business and this site is to die off like every single other alternative platform before it. I say let it die, let it die, let it die. There are a lot of videos calling out problematic things online and debunking them because they're stupid. But I think sometimes we miss why there's a demand for those things, why they even have a foothold, right? Do you remember how I mentioned Chad Chad's video about just pearly things at the start of this video? I I love this video. Like, I wanna make videos like this video. Like, this video was so brutal that it should have been uploaded to Live League. Between the time that Chad Chad released this video and now, Pearl's sub count has doubled. I mean, 
not her audience size because she's still making bad content. And while I love this video so, so much, it doesn't solve the problem that there are a lot of incel losers on the internet who subscribe to Pearl. So why is Rumble even talked about and why do mainstream creators even consider going there? YouTube does this hilarious thing where they will just demonetize a video for zero reason. And in order for the creators to get their issues addressed, they have to get the attention of the Team YouTube Twitter account. One particularly ridiculous example I remember of this is Summoning Salt having a video that he put out that had a mile, like a section in it that had some cursing in it. And they demonetized and suppressed the entire thing. And then he went on Twitter, got it unsuppressed, and then they resuppressed it. Stip, stop, stip, stop, stip, stop. And the only reason that I can imagine that the Salty Cracker was able to amass such a large transphobic audience on this platform is because nobody is bothering to check in with what the people who upload here are actually doing. And I, I know they caught him eventually, but this shit took way too long, way too long. I mean, if you're YouTube, your own creators who do this for a living can probably tell you which weirdos need to be banned. I know that creators occasionally get the opportunity to speak with the big wigs at YouTube. And in my opinion, this is the number one issue that they need to be talked to about and to fix on this platform because it is the only thing creating a demand for Rumble. It's like Jenga. If you pull out the shitty moderation on YouTube, Rumble's whole tower just falls down. I don't have the full answer for what exactly should happen, but I do know that YouTube needs to be better. At this point, I wasn't sure how to cap off the video. I mean, how do you end a video where you talk about something that's incredibly problematic that you just want to go away? So I turned to one of YouTube's original greats for inspiration. What do I know? Ooh. Me, right? <laughs> oh God, it's so bad. Luckily for me, Rumble is the only alternative to mainstream social media platforms. And I will never have to think about a conservative social media platform alternative ever again in my life. In my next video, I do a deep dive into the conservative tech space, learning about the platforms themselves, detailing Twitter's transformation seemingly into an alternative tech site, and understanding why exactly all of these platforms explode uh, given enough time. Of course, I do have a fun time laughing at the insane people that are on these sites. Here's an end card for you in case you hate your sanity as much as I do. Please click.